We're visiting now with Rochelle Hack, who is one of two Teachers of the Year from the San Juan Unified School District. Thanks for joining us and congratulations. Thank you. So tell us about yourself. Tell us uh, where you teach and what you teach. I teach at Del Campo High School in Fair Oaks and I teach high school English. Okay. Yeah. So now when you teach, when you're saying English, kind of what wi wide range? Are you talking composition? Are you talking literature or all of that? All of it. I mostly teach freshmen and sophomores, and then I also teach an elective class called Children's Literature in high school. So, so let's talk about that first. Uh -huh. Let's talk about what you teach with Children's Literature. Are they analyzing? Or are they writing? Both. Both they okay. actually um, read literature. We start off by reading fables and fairy tales and nursery rhymes, and then they get to compose their own and we actually are able to work together with a neighboring school, um, an elementary school, where we go once a week and they're able to share some of the stuff that they've actually composed and then they're able to help their little first grade buddy with reading or projects of their own. So what, what kind of a sense of accomplishment is that for some of these students who, who are you know, writing children's books basically? They love it. A lot of them don't come into the class you know, wanting to be authors of their own, but they end up really enjoying and having a good time with the class. Um, they absolutely love working with the little kids. We do um, some out of the class activities with them where they, you know, come over to, they came over to our school last year and we put on a puppet show for them, a Dr. Seuss puppet show, and we had about 60 first graders come over with parents and their uh, teachers, and it was a great opportunity. The high school students love it. Well, that's great. Yeah. So, so they're they're writing children's literature, and so when they're doing that, they have to realize that they're not just writing a story, mm -hmm. but they have to write it so that it's understandable mm -hmm. at the at the at the uh, right age level mm -hmm. and all of those things. Yeah, it's it's a great opportunity for them, in a sense, to do something fun, but to also learn the techniques of being a good writer. So they're having to go through the revision process, and they're having to be creative with their writing. So it's it's a fun opportunity for them as well as a learning opportunity, which we like as teachers. Okay, so let's get back to, let's talk about English composition. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, how critical is that uh, to, to work with students with their writing and composition skills? And what are you seeing in the classroom? It's huge. Uh, with writing especially, you know, it's, a tech, it's something that you're going to take with you into the workforce, into your life for the rest of, you know, forever. You need to be able to write. So for students, um, what I notice a lot nowadays is, you know, we have the texting generation. So we mm -hmm. have students coming in that don't run spell check, that don't read over their work before they send it. So it's a process that we have to go through as English teachers. You know, we have to teach them to really edit and to look at their work again, not just hit send after they've printed it and typed it, you know. Do you feel that uh, in this age of text speak that students mm -hmm. are uh, not as strong of a writer as they should be, or are they learning to be condensed? I mean, how is it impacting their, their, their composition skills? What's interesting, what I've noticed is that the creativity isn't lacking, it's still there. So creatively, you know, they're great. What's lacking is structure or sentence, you know, um, understandability. Like we just don't see that they really know where to put the periods and the commas and capitalization and things like that. So it's something that we continually year after year are having to instruct them on. Mm -hmm. And so, you, but hopefully by the end of the year they've kind of... Gotten, you know, yes, realized. improved, definitely, yes. Now do you feel that uh, in teaching the composition that it's, it's a real sense of accomplishment for some of these kids when they come in with, you know, not a really good understanding mm -hmm. of sentence structure, composition, mm -hmm. subject, verb agreement, and all that. And oh, by yeah. the end, they have, they have it down better. You know, we do pre-tests and post-tests, and they can definitely see a growth. And that's huge for students to be able to see where they started and where they, you know, have gotten. So that's big. So let's talk about the, the infusion of Common Core. Mm -hmm. How is that going to impact what you're doing? You know, Common Core, um, the, huge, the huge piece with Common Core is bringing in um, nonfiction pieces. So with the literature that we teach, um, we have to search for nonfiction pieces that relate. Uh, not too difficult, you know. Uh, we started doing it last year. Uh, we 
for one of the units I teach is Life of Pi, um, a novel. Obviously, it was made into a movie, but it's a survival story. So uh, we found a bunch of nonfiction pieces on survivors, and uh, my students read those pieces, and we tried to come up with an ultimate survival pattern. You know, uh, what does it take to survive? And uh, no matter if you're out at sea or if you're in the mountains or the forest, you know, is there an ultimate pattern? And they were so into that. Mm -hmm. So it's finding those relevant pieces that I think the Common Core is going to bring into instruction, which is fabulous. There's more of a relevance and an understanding yeah. of why you've gotten what you've got. Why, gotten. Yeah. you know, what, and you know, and finding out, I think, a little bit more of history behind stories, and uh, the students feel more connected to them that way. So, how long have you been teaching? I've been teaching for 11 years, okay. uh, seven years in middle school, and then the last four years have been in high school. Was it a big jump, middle school to high school? You know, because I teach freshmen and sophomores, I wouldn't say they're that different, that much different than eighth graders. Don't tell the freshmen. I know, right? That, right? I yeah. know, they're so big. But <laughs> um, I would say that the probably the largest thing that I've noticed difference between middle school and high school is uh, there's a little bit more of a management, you know, self management. You tell them what they need to do and they take care of it. Middle school, it's a little bit more hand-holding, you know, guiding along uh, the way, but they're still fun. You know, I loved middle school. I loved eighth grade. There's a, there's such a fun quality about that age level, and they're still fun in high school. It's just a little bit different. Mm -hmm. So what inspired you to be a teacher in the first place? How did you get to this profession? Great question. You know, um, interestingly enough, my mom's a teacher. Not uncommon. Not uncommon, but I didn't grow up wanting to be a teacher. I actually didn't even think about it when I was growing up. I wanted to be a veterinarian. And I had taken all of my general ed classes in college and signed up for my first animal science class, got the book, looked at it, and it was all about the different cuts of meat. <laughs> and my stomach started churning and I was like, oh, this is not for me. And I had a little bit of a, a moment where I started freaking out. What am I going to do with my life, right? And I um, had a dear friend of mine who was taking a creative writing class. And she said, why don't you sign up for this creative writing class with me? And I signed up, and I took it, and I absolutely loved it. And it just kind of came together that I loved English. I had always done well in English. And I really liked teaching. And I haven't looked back since. It's been such a joy. Was it interesting to have that kind of that turn that you were not expecting? Yeah, and I always tell my students, you know, they are asked all the time, what do you want to be when you grow up? And some of them are like, I don't know. Others, you know, have an answer right away. They know what they want to do, but, you know, that can change. We grow, we adapt as people, and we learn about ourselves along the way. And so I always tell them, it's okay if you don't know right now. You know, just keep striving for greatness, and you'll find your way. And was there one teacher who helped kind of turn on that light bulb for you? You know, I had a few teachers in high school, which ironically, English teachers, mm -hmm. who um, just I loved. And I think it was more so than the creativity that was happening in the classroom is more um, the relationship I had with them. And I think that's something that I've tried to instill in my instruction is creating relationships with my students because that really gets them to a desire to learn. So if you had someone who was thinking of teaching as a profession, what would you, what would you say to them? I would say go for it. You know, I think some people would say, you know, I don't know if there's, you know, jobs out there and maybe deter them, but I have gained so much from this uh, profession and have just loved every minute of it. Um, I would say there's probably days, yes, when you're tired and worn out and it didn't go as you planned in the classroom. You know, we all have that with our jobs, but um, there's way more benefits, you know, to see students love being in your classroom and to see them learning and growing and um, you know for me because I was in eighth grade and I actually taught across the street from my high school I was able to have students in my classroom in eighth grade freshman year sophomore year senior year you know and I was able to see that growth it's such it's such a pleasure as a teacher to be able to see that what's it mean to you to be a teacher of the year what's it mean to me yeah you know I shock, I guess, you know, I, I, I had a hard time with um, initially accepting the nomination because, 
You know, I, I see myself as somebody that's passionate about what I do, but um, I, I guess I don't ever realize that I'm, I stand out in the crowd, maybe. I mean, I just do what I love and what I know is good for students. So um, it, was, it was so nice to be able to know that that's being recognized by people. Well, congratulations Thank to you. Thank you. We've been speaking with uh, Rochelle Hack, who is one of two teachers of the year from the San Juan Unified School District. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.